choosing the right wheels for race day can be so tricky and rightly so because they can have a huge effect on your performance. Yeah, it is always a question of balancing the aerodynamic advantages of a deeper wheel against the slightly lighter weight and potentially for the greater stability of a shallower wheel. Well, what about a disc? I mean, we see the pros riding them, they look fast, but are they right for us and when would we want to use them? How do they compare to a deep section wheel? Well, with the launch of our partner's new disc wheel, the NV SES disc, we're going to be putting it up against one of their shallower wheels, the NV SES 7.8, to see how they compare, but also to help explain to you how and when they may suit different riders and different courses. Before we go any further, let's take a walk down memory lane. Back in the mid-1980s, Francesco Moser broke the one-hour record indoors on a track using both a front and a rear disc wheel. Now, this was more or less the first time that we'd seen disc wheels in use and in quite some style. So it's not a surprise that it made some impact and it suddenly increased the popularity of the disc wheel, especially amongst triathletes, as well as our dedicated time trialing friends. Well, it seems that triathletes are quite often unsure as to what wheel type they should use. So to start off with, I thought we'd talk through the deep section wheel and the benefits behind it and what makes them so fast. So you can see that it has this airfoil shape to it and that helps it to pass through the air more smoothly when you compare it to something like a shallow box shaped rim. And when you think about it, you've got the tire as the leading edge that cuts through the air and then the air then passes over the rim. And the idea behind the deep section rim is it allows the air to pass over smoothly and bring it back together in a clean fashion, which when you compare to a shallow shaped rim again, or a shallow box shaped rim, it can't do that. The air comes back together in a messy fashion, more turbulent, and that creates drag. Secondly, deep wheels can almost create a sail effect. So when the airflow follows over the wheel at an angle, it can almost create a slight forward thrust. So actually, a wheel's own drag can decrease as the wind angle and wind speed increases, obviously to a point, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. We're now onto the disc wheel, the don of all aero wheels. The wind passes smoothly over this surface because there's no break in the surface, so you're not gonna have that turbulent effect or any drag. And as for that sail effect that we mentioned earlier, you can see it doesn't really get any better than this. So let's get this show on the road. I think it's time we put these wheels through their paces to find out whether one is faster than the other for either of us. Yep, so we're going to be doing a flat 5k time trial along the Queen K, which is part of the Ironman World Championship course, and it's very famous for its strong winds. In fact, today it's recording around 13 kilometers per hour, coming at us from around a northwesterly direction. So a nice crosswind to try the wheels out with, but nothing too severe. Well, Mark, you're going to be holding around 300 watts, and I'm going to be trying to hold 200. Okay, so starting off with the deep section wheels, flat time trial, here I come. Okay, it's my turn to test out the deep section wheels on the flat. Here we go. I'm going full aero now, my second run on the disc wheel. Let's go. Okay, same again, still holding 200 watts, but this time I've got the disc wheel in the back, so let's see how fast I can go.
Well, that was good fun. We were absolutely flying along there, weren't we? Yeah, it felt pretty good. Yeah, well, my time on the deep section wheel was seven minutes and two seconds. Well, I was seven minutes, 50 seconds on that one. And then on the disc wheel, I was six minutes and 49 seconds. So considerably faster, actually. Yeah, same. Well, I was quicker with a 7.43 on this. And I have to say, I felt like I was really getting that sail effect with the yeah. disc wheel. I was flying along and it just felt so easy, so smooth. Yeah, I mean, it's the first time I've ridden a disc and I loved it. It felt pretty cool. But obviously not all courses are pancake flat like that section of road that we just used. And that is where things start to become a little bit fuzzy and confusing for people because a disc wheel obviously has more material on it, so they tend to weigh a little bit more. And if you take this NV SES disc, its new disc wheel, it is a fraction heavier. It's remarkably light, but still around 1,125 grams. Whereas this SES 7.8 deep section wheel weighs around 950 grams. So the question is, do you want to be carrying that extra weight? And what difference will it make when it comes to a climb? Well, we've come out of the town of Kona to this hill here, and we're gonna be riding a distance of approximately 3K that's got an average gradient of six to 7%. Yeah, and we're gonna be making sure that we start and finish at the same point each time. And given that it is a hill, we need to make sure that we get up over that hill. So we're gonna bump our power up a fraction now. So I'm gonna be riding at 350 watts and Heather is gonna be riding at 250 watts. Yeah, I mean, as expected, it feels pretty normal. I am used to riding deep section wheels and when it comes to the hill, I'm happy to be ahead of the saddle, in the saddle. And it's gonna be interesting to see how it compares to the disc wheel. Okay, same thing again, same hill, same power, but now I'm on the disc wheel. Let's go. So I actually feel all right when we're on the shallower gradients, but as it starts to kick up, as it sort of fluctuates up this climb, I do feel it a bit more on those slightly steeper gradients. I think it's just slight additional weight, perhaps, when I'm getting up out of the saddle, just a little bit more material maybe, just moving from side to side, a bit more weight. Just feels a little bit different, a little bit harder. Well, that is the hill climb complete and that was quite hard work. Yeah, I'm glad that one's over. Yeah, well, on the deep section wheel, I was around seven minutes and 46 seconds. Well, I was around eight minutes 50 on this one. And then on the disc wheel, I was a fraction slower. I was seven minutes and 55 seconds. Well, I was also slower on the disc with an 8.56. Yeah, which I think has gone to show that we really should consider our wheel choice options. If you are doing a course that is slightly hillier, you're going at gradients that maybe are above 6%, you're losing that aerodynamic advantage and you're losing your speed. A, sh a shallower wheel, slightly less weight, maybe has a little bit more advantage. Okay, what about the speed that we're traveling? This isn't actually something that I considered before, but it's partly the reason that MV have taken so long to release a disc wheel. See, traditionally, a lot of wheels are tested at around the 50 kilometer per hour mark. And obviously, they prove that disc wheels are faster. But then how many of us are actually traveling at 50 kilometers per hour during a race, or at least for that long, and particularly given the length of a bike leg during a triathlon? So Envy have tried to be realistic in their approach to this in the past, and that is why they've tried to optimize wheels that are suited to the speeds that most of us are traveling at. And according to their research, they've found that an open spoke deep section wheel to be faster for the speeds that most of us are traveling at. But they have found that there is a need for a disc wheel for some of those faster athletes and potentially on some of those shorter courses. So if you are an athlete that's gonna be traveling at over 27 miles per hour or 43 kilometers per hour, then a rear disc wheel may well be the better option for you depending on the course. However, the wind is another factor that you need to consider. Now, we've already mentioned the sail effect, so the deeper the wheel, the greater the sail effect, and obviously the greatest when it comes to the disc wheel. But if you've got very strong crosswinds, or even worse, gusts, it can start to get a little bit harder to control your bike when you've got a disc wheel on the back. And that's actually the reason that disc wheels are banned here at the Ironman World Championships in Kona, because of those strong winds that come down off the mountain and can really gust and catch riders out. And it's a worse effect the lighter the rider is as well, and it just makes your bike that much harder to control. So you need to consider this and think about the energy you're going to be wasting trying to control your bike compared to the aero benefit you'll get from a disc wheel. So in short, 
A disc wheel is clearly fast if perhaps you're planning on racing a short distance, a flat course, or expecting to hit high speeds. But if you're not expecting to hit speeds in excess of 43 kilometers per hour, or for long, then a set of deep section wheels may be the better and more versatile option for you. Yeah, and as we've mentioned, a disc wheel isn't suitable for all courses, and it is a big investment for performance, but if you decided that's what you want to do, then for certain courses, yes, there is that benefit. But you're probably gonna to need to invest in a deep section wheel as well for those courses when you can't ride one of these. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this and you want to get all of our videos from GTN. If so, just hit that globe to subscribe. And if you want to see our seven aero hacks video, that's just here. If you'd like to see our comfort versus aero video where I play around with different positions on the bike, then just click down here.